pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, please remain standing for a moment of silence for the sick, handicapped, departed, the military personnel of this community, and particularly George Bioli, a former Bridgeville police officer. Thank you.
And I've lived in Briggsville for 40 years, and I've never seen a sign that sat in right center field in the woods area. Okay? It says about danger, the water could have raw sewage if the water is up. So, I noticed that the other day. It's the overflow. It's the overflow. It's the overflow, and then there's a sign there. Okay, it looks fairly new. No, it's been there. It's been there for years, Jay. It was a requirement of the administrative consent order with the EPA that if you've seen a uh, overflow of that sanitary sewer mantle during a, a dry weather period, you were supposed to call the pay, the phone number on it and let the borough know that it was overflow. That's okay, I understand that what you're getting at, but I mean, if it's for the danger of the public to be aware of, not to, for kids to go in the water. That uh, I feel some signs should be posted more into the park, not hidden not in the weeds in right center field. You have to uh, literally walk there. That's the first time I see it. It's a sign right by the. It's right by the it's main right by little structure. Yeah. Yeah. It's a yellow. But it's still a thick raw sewage. They're saying you know. Well, that energy water. that would occur during high water situations. Yeah, I understand. I'll tell you, water in my basement through the sewers. I, I understand. I'm water. just I'm just telling you that's what. The overflow, that's the purpose yeah. of it. Well, it's when everything else is overflowed. But during normal times, like any other time of the year, that's what the purpose of the sign is, is to tell tell you that if the nobody goes purpose. back there, no. You yeah. understand where I'm getting at, I, okay? It's, uh, if, if you got a carload of kids and they're going to play, they go out in the creek. They don't know that sign's way out there. That's what I'm saying. There but should be some signs posted. That's it, it would be it would be a massive storm happening if it was overflown. We know it don't happen like that anymore. The more they build in Upper Saint Clair, the more water we get. I lived there. I watched the creek levels come up like that. Okay, and I don't understand why they can't dredge the creek, Upper Saint Clair. That is okay. Because if we dredge our creek air in time in Bridgeville, all their stuff, their stones and pebbles and soot and silt comes down there and, and it defeats the whole purpose of what we did. But I, you know, it's, no, I agree. And so, and I have another thing I want to bring up. I reported a tree back in September by it being dead. The property owner was informed about it, nothing was done, and the tree fell on November 18th, knocked the pyre out for several, almost three hours, and someone dropped the ball on that complaint. Well, I sent her a letter, she contacted me, said she was having some financial issues and her son was going to try to help her get somebody in to take the tree down. Well, so. I had financial issues when you people was harassing me about my garage and my son died. And it didn't, apparently, it didn't bother you people by sending me letters, even to property that I didn't live in, that I owned. And that. So with that, I ain't got nothing else to say, because it don't it's gonna fall in deaf ears anyways. There's no other. Oh I, oh, I wanted to ask one more thing. I'm sorry. forgot. But uh, I, that garage, it's on Bar Hill Road. The whole ass end of it, excuse me, the butt end of it, the back end of the garage. It's falling in the creek. You know what I'm talking about. We discussed that. Yeah, on Baldwin Street. Okay? I had a letter here that I had 30 days to correct my issues. Okay? How long is that going to take to get torn down or fixed? Because we don't need no more stuff in the creek, jamming it. It's the one next to the old beer distributor. Yeah, I'm, you, I'm you sure you know. You see it Hill, it's actually facing Baldwin Street. The property that's on Baldwin Street, the back yeah, of the property, the garage in. corner has basically no, the garage, the garage back, the whole back end. The back wall of the garage has failed and has deteriorated into McLaughlin Creek. So this is property on Baldwin Street. The ground's eroded from the high water. Okay, well, yeah. look, I'll, I'll, I'll need to get an address and the building inspector will go down and... Are you talking about where the plumber is? Next door. It's next door. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Next, next door. door. Yeah. Next door to Dwayne Cavies. I, I don't know. It ain't that hard to do drive up and know what I'm talking about. Let me ask this question about
about the block because Jay brought it up and I'm going to ask the manager if she doesn't mind. I, I apologize for putting it on the spot. Uh, how, you know, we have been removing sediment, we have been cleaning out McLaughlin Run. Mm -hmm. And I don't know when the last time we did it. We cleaned, we put a backhoe in there and actually cleaned out two summers ago. Is there a, you know, I have a suggestion for your question, okay? Yeah. What they need to do, okay? Yeah, from the no, we don't dredge, we, 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 we maintain. Okay, here's the thing, okay, because you're going to get into the EPA. You know what cracks me up about that? They don't care. They're, all the dry, the, the dry land, the woods that they build and build and build on, okay? What about the wildlife that lives there, okay? And they want to throw, well, you can't clean the waterways. Well, it's affecting us, okay? What are the pro us property owners? Or, our property values are down. Well, it's good for one thing because of taxes, okay? Uh, but we're penalized by having to have flood insurance for the banks with our mortgage. And I, in my personal experience, I've had flood insurance for 30 years, okay? And I'm sure I ain't the only one that went through this with the flood insurance. It's a big scam. I had to replace my furnace, my water heat, everything when we had that big flood. I got a $1,600 check. And you know where that check was from? Lloyd's of London. Okay? And you can't appeal it. Would you get, which, and how much it costs to get a furnace these days? More than $1,600. And I only had a $500 deductible. It's the biggest ripoff there is. And what about, I heard uh, about uh, check valves or something? Can't, uh, you know, us residents on Baldwin Street, Maple Street, and parts of McLaughlin, we get water up through our sewers. Mm -hmm. Why should not Elk Sam or whoever, why should we have to pay our sewage bill when we lose thousands of dollars in personal property when the creek comes up, okay? When we're getting raw sewage through the sewers in our basements, okay? And we're paying sewer bill. It shouldn't be up to the property owner who can't afford a plumber these days, okay, to put a check valve in. That should be, there should be something on the sanitary line where it prevents coming into the house, okay? When the, it, so there's a flaw in the infrastructure, and us residents pay for it. And, you know, and it don't take much when it rains. You go up South Hills Village now, what is it, a bunch of condos or something they're putting up right by the trolley thing there? Big construction going on. But they ain't going to let you clean out the creek. I find that hard to believe if it was pursued. What about the Army Corps of Engineers? We've already We've been down that road. We've been down the road with Army Corps of Engineers. <coughs> requesting studies, requesting them to extend the the tributary of the James Fulton project up on Glockland Run so that we get get assistance in cleaning it and we've been turned down. To do their cost, well, to do their cost benefit analysis. So well, something needs to be done with them continuing to build up there because we're getting the damage down here. That's all I'm saying with Upper St. Clair. Because we're not benefiting tax dollars or nothing like that. We're benefiting of having to clean our basements and that. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Jay. <clears throat> minutes. Uh, motion to Borough Council regarding the minutes of November 13, 2017, regular meeting as submitted. So, uh, Bruce and Second. Bill Henderson. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. Our motion to Borough Council regarding the minutes of November 21. 2017 budget workshop meeting as submitted. So moved. Sir Cherry. Yes. And Bruce Calarducci. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. All right. Uh, ordinance number 998. Uh, motion of the Borough Council regarding, regarding ordinance number 998. Ordinance amending the current rates charged for sewer service within the Borough of Bridgeville with the Allegheny County Sanitary Authority increase of an additional 51 cents per 
1,000 gallons of water usage and a $1.09 per quarterly bill increase of the service charge. The borough proposes no increase in 2018. Uh, Alpha Sand rate for 2017, $6.92 per 1,000 1, gallons. Borough rate, $6.23 per 1,000 gallons. For a total of thirteen dollars and fifteen cents per one thousand gallons, with the office and service charge uh, taken to fourteen dollars and fifty one cents per quarter. Two thousand eighteen rates seven dollars forty two cents. Office and uh, rate of per one thousand gallons. Borough rate of six dollars twenty three cents per one thousand gallons. For a total of thirteen dollars and sixty five cents per one thousand gallons, with the office and service charge to $15.60. Uh, public hearing was held uh, December 11, 2017 at 6.30 to receive public comments. The ordinance has been duly advertised. Any motion? Any motion? So moved. Uh, Bruce Gallarucci? I'll second. And Bill Anderson? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, ordinance number 999, uh, motion of the borough comments regarding, regarding ordinance number 999, ordinance levy, <coughs> and assessing real estate taxes for general and specific purposes, establishing a separate tax millage rate on land and on building improvements, establishing a homestead property exclusion of $12,000, and providing for payment due dates at uh, discount 2%. At face and at penalty 10% for the year tax year 2018. Uh, ordinance has been duly advertised. Any motion? So moved. Mark Cherry? I'll second. And Bill Anderson? All of those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, resolution number 2017 12. A uh, motion of the borough council regarding resolution number 2017-12, a resolution approving the budget for the fiscal year 2018 and adopting the same. So moved. Uh, Bruce Gallarducci? Second. And Joe Cosmo? All those in favor? Uh, Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Ordinance number 1000. A uh, motion of the borough council regarding ordinance number 1000. An ordinance setting the police pension fund contributions to fund the shortfall in the police pension fund, evidenced by an independent actuarial uh, study as permitted by previous ordinances, and the police collective bargaining agreement. Uh, contributions will be lowered from 8% to 7% beginning January, for, uh, January 1, 2018. The ordinance has been duly advertised. So moved. Bill Anderson? Second. And Bruce Gallarducci? All those uh, in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Ordinance number 1001. An ordinance of the Borough Council regarding Ordinance 1001, an ordinance establishing a volunteer service credit program authorizing local tax credits for volunteer members of the Bridgeville Volunteer Fire Department and establishing administrative procedures and appeals. Uh, the ordinance has been duly advertised. Um, I make a yes. On page five, under the earned income tax credit, the Finance Committee has recommended a credit of $300. Thank you. Thank you very much. Which is similar to what some other municipalities right. have done. That would equate to a $30,000 income. So moved, Mike. All right, Bill Henderson? Second. Uh, uh, Bruce Gallarducci? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, resolution number 2017-13. Uh, motion of the Borough Council regarding resolution number 2017-13, a resolution establishing the annual criteria that a volunteer must meet to be certified under the Borough of Regional Volunteer Service Credit Program to claim local tax credits. Make them up. Uh, Brett Cherry? I'll second. And Bill Anderson? Does that, does that have been established? They have the hours? Bill, is that already taken care of? Yeah. All right. Could, if you don't mind, I know we're moving, but are you comfortable 
sort of describing what they are for the community? I, mean, I, I think it's it's rather the volunteer fire company in this community could use more human, more volunteers, and I think it would be good to to give the community some sort of an idea as to what the volunteers volunteer for. We talk about it, but a lot of people in our town don't really know. That these people don't just show up for fires, Bill, they train. What our time <laughs> is involved. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, just a uh, quick the time involved. Well, how much time do these guys do put in training? A new member, when a new member comes in and is not in the fire service and has to go through his training, before he can even fight a fire, they have to go through 180 some hours of training to get certified. That's away from work. You know, they got work on top of it, a family. Then it's keeping up on everything. We have yearly trainings that we have to stay up and certified on. That's probably about another at least 24 to 36 hours requirements there. And uh, we have our normal trainings on Thursday nights, which is about four or five hours. Plus we have other trainings. We just had one about a week ago, one on Sunday for six hours. We've had weekend trainings for 16 hours. These are throughout the years. On top of doing our <laughs> fundraising for the cash bash, fish fries, gun bash, the mega bash tickets, and I didn't even get into the fire calls, you know, that we go on and we miss work for. You know, the guys leave work or show up to work late. You know, we run, we have an average of about 200 calls a year, is what we get, you know, and we've all missed those family things from. Thanksgiving, Christmas, birth, kids' birthdays, major stuff that we do. And uh, we have a good team over there. And we do this for nothing. You know, yeah, the borough helps out a lot, everything else, but, you know, these people put their time in for nothing to come down and do it for the community. To, to, to get this, what, what, what are the standards that you're putting in place for a volunteer? To, uh, to qualify. I mean, we followed suit with another one that, right. that came in. It, it has a list on it. Yeah, it's, uh, a, it's in the uh, resolution. Yeah, it's 100 hours, 25 hours, of which must be training, and eight hours must be truck checks. They have to attend six out of 12 regular meetings, 20% mm -hmm. of available fundraising hours throughout the year and 20% of emergency calls. That's active and special active life number. So associate is 40 hours, 6 out of 12 meetings, 20% of available fundraising hours throughout the year. Yeah, oh, it's an age range. No, there's no age range. Yeah, we're doing it. No. Nope. Nope. Don't. We Ed, Ed, Ed Rufinak was still a fireman into his 80s? Mm. He was 96 when he passed away. He was 96. And so, he was active all the way up to the very last year. Right, and I remember him at the... A fall, took him out, so, so, for the last year. You know, while there's a, there's a, you know, a, a lot of training involved, they're not looking for, you know, four or five hundred hours. If you have, what, two hundred hours a year, you know? That goes quick. Yeah, but... What I'm to trying, what I'm trying to say to the community chief is, we need, if we you need. have time, they can. And use that's not even firefighting. In you can come in as right. Uh, Councilman Colosmo has, you know, mm -hmm. as an associate just to help out behind the scenes. There's always right. stuff to do. It's very busy down there, and I think a, a lot of people in the community don't realize how busy we are behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody here knows, but there's a lot of work involved keep it going and to keep it, you know, I don't want to say this, but I have to, is to keep it so we're still a volunteer service for this community. Mm -hmm. You know, none of us want to see it go to the next level. And that's what we're trying to do to keep it going that way. That's a great part of the community. Yeah. Thank and you for telling the community. <laughs> And we didn't create this. This was a bill that was proposed by was it the fire commissioner. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, 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 <clears throat> yeah, the yeah. fire commissioner presented this and got this bill in for everybody. This is a start for stuff to help us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's the thing. Right. Councilman, I'm using it as a 
as a springboard to allow the chief to tell the community what we up here already know, that volunteers are needed. Yes. Yeah, we're very, and everybody knows, we're very active in the community because we're at all the community events that really go on, so we take pride in that. Yeah. And we got Santa detail coming up, so I'll report on that <laughs> later on. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, each state reserves our uh, individual contribution for each individual person or to the fire department. No, the, the individual. It does not adapt you to it well. Pardon? They are on the W-2 as well. That's what you give them W-2. What this does is give tax relief from your local wage tax. Right. So I want to it allows it allows that's somebody. That's enough. You can I work over the at Lowe's, and if you yeah. happen to be a volunteer fire Thank person, you. you get the wage credit. Right. Up to three hundred dollars. That's good. That's good. Thank you. That's my point. Question on the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Mm -hmm. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, resolution number 2017-14, motion of the Borough Council regarding resolution number 2017-14, a resolution uh, prohibiting the location of a Category 4 licensed casino, fa casino facility within the Borough of Bristol. So moved. Mark Cherry. Second. And Bruce Calarducci. Excuse me, second. Yes, sir. I'm looking at this one. <laughs> How did this end up? <laughs> I know. I know that our solicitor found this. Right. Which is, well, it was your, you know, it was, I know that if we don't do this, we can never prohibit. And these are the, the large casinos in Pittsburgh and around the state. There are what ten licenses? There are ten mini casino licenses. These are actually for class fours. These are smaller, right. uh, up to 300 years. I only pass this out informationally because it was given to us. Somebody stuck in the statute an opt out provision it be, that allows you to become a dry, you know, casino town, so to speak, if you act before the end of this year. Nobody's suggesting that you would even wish to do that. Okay, nobody's advocating. I don't advocate, but nobody's advocating to put on for discussion's sake. You may not wish to do that. Frankly, many places would like to have a casino. In actuality, we're exempt anyway because if you read the if you read the what, what was given, they're not permitted to put put one within 25 miles of a category one, of which we are within 25 miles right, of the category medical. one. Right. So, so in actuality, they're not allowed to put one this close anyway. Today. Today. Yeah. But uh, there may not be any, I mean, if the board doesn't have any opposition to having a casino here anyway, there's no reason to do this. Yeah, it's just if you want to consider it, if not, you don't have to. Does anybody want to make a motion? So we had a question. So if you're making a motion, you're actually saying that you wish to prohibit them. Just so you yes, sir. What, what's a class four casino? They're, they're What's that mean? Window. They're little minis. They're like sad. I think it's only 300, 300, it's 100 like, to 300 yeah. machines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if like one of the buyers want to put in a, put in a few machines or something. No. No. It it's like it's from it was from like 35 to seven through. There's 350. Right. And Lori's right. As a practical matter, these are going to be linked up with the primary license holders, and, and they're meant to allow them to open smaller establishments that are really intended to be in more or less urban places that allow them to operate under the same umbrella. So Lori's right. They're not going to put one within the same How confines of their own major casino. casinos. <laughs> this is sort of like. Be, which list do you want to be on? Because it's not coming here. No, 25 but, linear miles of an existing category one, two, or three casino. So I'm asking, and I'm suggesting, by the way, oh, that you're not. Hmm? Excuse me. It's a minimum of 300 and maximum of 750 slot machines. So it's not small. Oh. Right. It's 300 slot machines. At, so at least. If we could find a place in Bridgeville. For 300, for 300 slot machines, yeah, it might be an interesting idea to allow you know, to have it. It's the it's the default position of our community that this. Let me let me, let me take a moment to get on my. On, on. The default position in Bridgeville is no. 
If it comes down... Yeah, sure. Only flicked off. Well, I understand. But broader than this ordinance, I'm trying to, to point out. Be careful what you say no to. You may get something worse. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Being on the list of being on the list of places that said no, we don't want. You know, mini casinos. Put you on a list. It tells you something about that community. I don't think anybody else is going to read it besides the people that are trying to open this one of these up. But why are we saying no? Think about it for a second. You know, just because we're allowed to say no, maybe we should say yes. Let's be on that list if they wanted to put an investment in our town. That's let us be open to something occurring. All of our other rules still are maintained. I have a question. Okay, so if we we can always we just take with what take with. <laughs> um, we can always change the ordinance. Yeah, you can change it back. Yeah. Yeah. So if somebody does come, they're not going to look like they're seeing the process. Here's what the legislators, the legislature I hear threw it out there. You have until New Year's Eve if you want to say no. And you have one shot to do it. If not, you're a yes community, which is probably theoretically not. If you are a no and you do pass a resolution, any time in the future, you can. Rescind the resolution one time, then you're permanently a yes community. Okay. So you can become a permanent yes community by doing nothing now and then the New Year's coming in. Or you could pass this and then when they do come, which they won't, you yeah. could reverse yourself. And no one is going to look past your list and come out and ask you to please say yes at some point. Obviously, this will be uh, 21 year old. I hope. Yeah, that's I don't know. Gambling would be 18, right? Oh, yeah. No, well, it's okay. Well, it's 12 years old. So. Well, we're not <laughs> 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 That's drinking. Yeah. Yeah. It's drinking. It's drinking. You know what? What would you have to play the number? Can I know? Is that 21 or 8? It's not 21 in the casino. I think they said it's 21. It's 21. It's 21. It's 21. Motion from Clerk Sherry. Is there a second? Yeah, I second it. And Bruce Calarducci? Second it. All those in favor? Uh, aye. Say aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Have we going to see us? So it seems. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Calendar year 2018 meeting advertisement. A motion to borough council approving the advertisement of the following meeting dates for the calendar year 2018 and advertise the same. The reorganization meeting will be held on the first Tuesday of January at 7 p.m. That's the second, correct? Uh-huh. Yes, it is. Uh, the remainder of the council meetings will be held on the second Monday of each month. <clears throat> Agenda meetings, 6.30 p.m. and regular meetings, 7 p.m. The Bridgeville Parking Authority meetings will be held the third Monday of each month at 7.30 p.m. The Planning Commission the planning commission meetings are scheduled the last Monday of each month at 7 p.m. during the months of January through April and June through October. The May meeting will be held on May 21, 2018. The November and December meetings will be combined and held on December 3, 2018. Zoning hearings will be scheduled as needed. That is so move that resolution. So move. Uh, Bruce Narducci? Second. And Bill Anderson? All those in favor? All right. All right. All those opposed? Motion okay. carries. Yes, sir. This may be a good opportunity to ask about the Planning Commission meeting that was supposed to occur on. What was it? What was it fourth? December fourth. December fourth. You know, this council expanded the planning commission. You've budgeted for the planning commission. The fact that the planning commission does not meet. Well, yeah. You add, you, you just you've just voted to advertise that they're going to meet every month. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
can you please instruct them to actually meet every month? I was here. I, it was my fault that no. I, uh, no, I, 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 I forgot to send off the email. Mm -hmm. um, I can say that I spoke with the president of the Planning Commission, John Cairns. Um, there wasn't anything on the agenda, but he did. Um, their plans are to start reviewing the comprehensive plan in January. Um, he sent out notification to all the Planning Commission members to read the first three chapters, and they begin work on work in January. So they will be meeting regularly. But will they be meeting every one of these advertised meetings, rather than canceling them when someone doesn't think that there's something for their agenda? Because the public may think there's something that the public wants to talk to them about. Or the council may actually have them doing something. I mean, I, like, you clearly, clearly the issue was not the number of people on the planning commission because that has not solved the problem, Mr. President. We will. So I just put it out. We will instruct them to make sure that they, the meetings are. Or uh, it's not uncommon, Mr. President, for planning commissions to cancel a meeting if there's no item on their agenda. It, it's not. It will all be, be more clear and as needed, and you eliminating all this. Well, I think there's, a, I think there's enough work yeah. this year for you. Absolutely, to I agree with you. Yeah, because we. I think just, just to clarify, there, there, there's, there's work to be had, and no question yeah. about it. I feel very strong that uh, we should meet every month. Okay. Thank you. Uh, current estimate number five and six, 2017 CCTV project. These are past 30 movies. Uh, motion of the Borough Council regarding the remittal of current estimate number five, 2017 CCTV uh, project to advance plumbing and drainage in the amount of $2,430 for the work completed to date, and current estimate number six in the amount of $1,242. Uh, these estimates have been reviewed by the engineer. Oh, so moved. Uh, Bruce Calabucci? Second. And Joe Cosmo? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, bill list. A motion to borough council regarding the 2017 bill list. So moved. Uh, Bruce? Second. Joe Cherry? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Payrolls, motion to borough council approve the payrolls of December 15, 22, 20, and 29, 2017. So moved. Uh, Bruce? Second. And Bert Cherry, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. Uh, monthly reports, a motion to accept and pay any commission due to uh, November 2017 real estate tax collector report. So moved. Uh, Bruce? Second. And Bert? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, motion to accept the October 2017 financial report. So moved. Bruce? I'll second. And Bill Henderson? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. A uh, motion to accept uh, November 2017 police report. So moved. Second. Uh, Bill Henderson and Joe Cosmo, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. And the motion to accept in November 2017. So moved. Bill? Yes. And second. And Bruce, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, committee reports, administration. I have a report. Just I want to thank our administrative um, department this past year for the work they've done. Merry Christmas to you all. Uh, uh, finance, Joe's not here. Um, he has a, a medical emergency with his family. He'll show up something for next month. Uh, Parks and Rec, Joe? Uh, nothing real. I just want to thank everybody that was involved in the, remember the light up night or whatever we call it these days. But it was a beautiful job. I think everybody that attended had a good time. Thank you. That's it. Uh, Public Works, Bruce. Um, other than thanking them, also Joe, Public Works for doing the lighting and all that, and uh, the leaf cleanup and, and brush cleanup they've been doing. Uh, it's been they've been constantly uh, on the road cleaning up. So thank them guys for that, and also thank them for their year of service. Merry 
Christmas building. Here, here. Uh, public safety building. Uh, Mike, we've met um, to discuss a couple of parking issues in town. We're, yep. uh, we're working on a couple changes in ordinance. We're not prepared to do it just right now, but um, there's a couple of places in town we, we, we're looking at. But um, one other thing I'd just like to thank the mayor for the last four years of collaborating with, with our committee and the, and the police department. I appreciate the work. Is that Mill Street? It is. Yeah. That's, Mr. Mayor. That's at the top corner. We've got some ideas. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Thank you for those kind words. It's been an honor. It has truly been an honor to serve. Um, and the lower tax rate on improvements, along with the homestead exemption, provides a small incentive for property owners to invest and live in our community. Bridgeville will benefit from the research, effort, and courage shown by council and the professionals who work to design and implement this structure. And I would like to say a very kind thank you to Councilwoman Mary Wise. Just because I reminded you of it? Well, a long, a long, long time ago. But uh, that courage uh, is, is good. While the new tax structure is positive, raising taxes is not. We already pay more for our municipal government than our neighbors. Taxes and spending should be reduced, not increased. The issues are structural. I would point out that, and I think I found something to pick on that might be a reasonable one. You know, in the budget is $40,000 for this municipal building. Now clearly it needs to happen, because if you're going to have a municipal building, you've got to maintain it. And the rugs do need clean, do need repair. So I'm not picking on the items. I'm pointing out that for 5,250 people to have this building costs a certain amount of money. And if you look at the, at the millage rates of our neighbors, and you look at Collier at 2.73 mills, which includes their garbage fees, if you look at South Bay at their millage, even if you look at Upper St. Clair and its millage, they are, okay? they are townships. And they're big. And they are bigger. And they're expensive. And they have other things. And frankly, we have great services, and I'm not disparaging any of that. I'm pointing out that it's an expensive structure. And as a group, and this is nothing that you're, I, I didn't bring this up during the budget resolution because there's, Nothing, you know, I could come up with things to cut, all of us could. But that's not what I'm speaking about right now. I'm pointing out that this structure of having Bridgeville's own municipal building, Bridgeville's own, of, of all of the things that we have, is expensive. And the council should look at other options, at other possibilities in conjunction with our neighbors to reduce the overall cost of our local government while still allowing it to be responsive. It can be responsive without being as expensive. Thank you. And it has been an honor. Thank you, Pat. You have anything, James? <laughs> I hope everyone has a great Christmas and not a good years. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Yeah, Appreciate yeah. it. Can you, can you raise your voice up? Uh, Nothing to add to my written report. Which everybody has already. Uh, in your sight. See you on my report. And Merry Christmas, everybody. When's Santa coming? Santa is coming December 23rd. We're starting at 1 o'clock. Going Saturday. around the town. Saturday? Yes. That's a Saturday. Um, the other thing from the fire department that we're doing is I have here for everybody in the room and you can have extras. We invested in a insurance plan for our members and part of it is a prescription card that if you're not on Medicare is about the only one it will not work with. 
but this will give you a discount on your prescriptions every time you use it. So if you go to wherever you go to get your prescriptions, show this card, they punch the numbers in there on the front, and you'll get a discount on your prescriptions if they're eligible. There's a lot of them that are eligible. There's more eligible than not. And the other thing is, every time you use this card, we get a dollar. So stop and think how many times you use it, or people in your family use it in a month. And it doesn't have, they don't have to be here in Pennsylvania, they can be in any other state. So if you have family members that need it, I have a bunch here for everybody to take and use. And every time you go, swipe it. You know, this, this will help us. That's uh, something we got through this program. We're one of the pioneers of this program on that. Um, the other last two things I have is everybody has seen, we invested in a new sign. Down here we've gotten a lot of compliments on it. So there'll be a lot more, uh, after we're done still training and learning it, we're still having some glitches of us working it. But uh, there'll be a lot of information coming out in time that we'll be posting on there throughout the years and in the future with it. So uh, I expect to see that. So we'll try to keep people up to date what's going on. And last, from the fire department, please have a safe and happy holidays. Nice. Nothing personal. We don't want any, we don't want to visit you. <laughs> Thanks, Phil. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, historical Society, Mary Weiss. First of all, you're invited tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. None of you, well, a few of you, graduated from Birchville High School, as so did I. And tomorrow night, we're going to discuss the years 1941, 42, 43. 1942, there was a real big football game and Bridgeville and won that. So that's tomorrow night. We also have calendars for sale. You know, every year it comes supplied. Um, and it's a tremendous job. Photographs, a little bit of history, uh, $10, the price has not gone up. Uh, and the very first one in it is the company in Bridgeville area that has turned 100, will turn 100 years old in 2018. That's courtesy Chevrolet. So it's a great, it's a great thing. Give me your $10, I'll give you lots of things. <laughs> um, I want to tell you a little bit about our Christmas tree. It has in it, on it, approximately 35 little ornaments that are exact replicas of those on the White House Christmas tree. A donor from Texas spent a lot of money because it's a 1981 through 2017. But they don't stick to those years. They go back and, and the ornaments are really neat and nifty. Uh, I want you to come take pictures. I want you to bring your families. If you want to come on a Saturday, let me know. We'll get people down there. It'll be open. Uh, and coming to that, we want to wish all of you a very healthy, happy New Year. But before you get to New Year, enjoy the holidays. Merry Christmas to you all, and thanks to you all. Now, just a couple little things about Birchville. I'm just hoping that the budgets all the way around, because you know, West, not West Bend Park, excuse me, Pennsylvania Water is going up 9% January 1. Because they're facing all the same problems we are. Uh, again, trying to get their water clean when it gets to your faucet in your house. Um, the other thing I'm bringing up again, PennDOT. I'm hoping that in 2118, I read here, that they are going to quickly create a four-lane each-way highway from Upper St. Clair to the new highway way out there somewhere. What is it, 43, whatever the number is. Uh, but it should be four lanes going south, west, whatever, and four lanes coming back the other way. Um, with all the, and that was brought up tonight too, with all the um, growing, much to our regret, uh, our neighbors do not want to dredge or clean their share of Mudlock and Run. Um, 
and we have a terrible time certain hours of the day, like tonight when I was coming home from work, it's 5, not 4.30. The traffic situation gets a little out of hand. That would help tremendously, getting them that way. And other than that, Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think we have parking for you, representatives here. Yeah, Rich McElose. Hi, Rich. Uh, the parking authority, first of all, wants to say uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to all our patrons. Free Christmas parking begins on the 15th of December and ends the 2nd of January. Uh, somebody asked about the apps. They're using the apps when they park. Since uh, October 15th, 321 app applications have been used. Uh, we had a total of 18,798 transactions from October 1st to the 10th of this month. So, a lot of partners. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Borough Manager. I supply the written report if anyone has any questions. And I just want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you very much. For Full uh, business. No. Oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> sorry. You're on the agenda. I, I am on the agenda. It's very hot. <laughs> I wanted to thank um, Bridgeville Borough Council, and I really want to thank the business office. Um, each and every time I've called to Lori or anyone who answers the phone, they've been so helpful to the Bridgeville Public Library, and that has been. Um, you know, I always remember what the line of services that we can expect from our borough because we have to take care of ourselves, but um, you, are, you guys come through and the ladies come through um, where they, it is appropriate to come through. Um, I just want to remind you there is a tree festival going on still in the library, so if you happen to pop in, walk around, there's um, some of the services, um, Gallagher Hospice Services, some of the businesses of Bridgeville, there's quite a few trees. And it, this is the first year it's been at the library on McMillan Street. And it was just a wonderful time. And it was a better idea. And it just felt really nice. And lastly, I want to thank Jan Nock, who is the president of the Friends of the Library, who's retiring and moving to Florida. And it, the presidency will be taken over by Cindy Michelli. She has some really good ideas and plans for the future to connect um, some of our um, special areas with people living, high rises, and some book services. And I'm looking forward to that new energy of volunteerism. But again, thank you so much. I appreciate your support this year, and I look forward to next year. And thank you so much, Mayor, for the you. Uh, new business. I got something real quick. Um, uh, last month, I did a. I went to a conference in uh, Pittsburgh at uh, the Hodges Wilson Center. It was the uh, sustainability conference, and it was pretty interesting because they had a lot of comments that you brought up today, talking about laterals, uh, representatives from Alcosin were there. It was representatives from Gateway, um, all talking about how to. You utilize your town not so much as a, you know, it isn't just about fixing the roads, it's fixing them properly, uh, making sure your sidewalks are connecting the neighborhoods together so people are, can get to the library. Um, so uh, making it a sustainable, not only just for businesses, but socially and economically. So uh, community for all. So there was a lot of really neat ideas there, and it's something we've talked about here, um, but it's also some new ideas that you can probably work on. So you got it. Um, and then with that said, I want to thank Bert, Neil, for the time on council, and obviously Pat, uh, thank you very much for all your input. Looking forward to more input next year. Real quick, last month I asked about the traffic, I'm not sure what's going on with that. Um, it's part of all the safety out I mean, uh, yeah, I don't know if you talked to Chad yet or not about it. He's been off. You know, yeah. Chad has been off. Okay. So I'm just saying, I'm here, so they get the, I mean, big trucks coming up my hill. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Chad's been, we have they, 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 they should be coming up that hill. Yeah, he's, he's due back. We are going up to Church Street. not be allowed here.
Yeah, you do. I, I think he's due back this week. Oh. Is it this week he's coming back for you know? Chad? Yeah. Uh, hey, we'll have some yeah. back this week. Sit down we'll, we'll make sure and continue to monitor for trucks on Ridge. They have been monitoring Ridge for trucks, for construction vehicles, and they'll, we'll make sure that they continue to do that. Put a camera on my house if you want. Your yeah. <laughs> we have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Bill? Sick. Niels? Bill? <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Merry Christmas, everybody.